There is so much coming up to be communicated. And it's soft, but there's a feeling of infinite power. And please don't put a lid over the possibilities through your attendance of satsangs. Truly, there is an, a river of unconditional love and just bathing in it week after week after week. This just comes through, this one, is from Ama, is from the Creator. But the thing about this work is it's very, very personal. It's very, very psychological and personal. And so it, it gives it a power to reach your hearts at a level that maybe you don't often experience. Because I get you. I get all of you. And everything I say personally to you is tailor-made to assist you to love and accept yourselves and to free your hearts, to free up the silence within you. Because that's the creator in you. And some of you, you, you go to feel the creator within you, you feel the distortions coming from your ego, from your ego's confusion. So it can seem that the creator, that there's something not quite right. But it isn't that there's something not quite right about the creator. You're just experiencing that your ego is distorting your connection to the creator. Okay, this is really, really important. And our ego will distort our, our connection to the creator and will even distort the information coming to us. So it is to become very, very patient with ourselves. Very, very patient. Because with the patience, you can clear an opening to your true self, to a whole new level of purity, to a whole new level of surrender, of allowing the flow of the creator within. Last night in the satsang, there was this lovely woman who had like a safety deposit box in her heart. And this I come across so frequently in all of us. And I said it before, but I'll say it again. With we women, particularly with this very sensitive feminine face of God energy, we often go to sleep by eight years old and we've lost it. But unless we allow it to come back in, our lives will be unfulfilled. I feel in some of you, and don't get scared about this, but I feel that it's almost like, it's as if there's going to be a rup an eruption of this creator energy in your heart for some of you. And it's like, you see, we get these eruptions when we're too tight with ourselves and we don't understand ourselves. So it's like a tap that's turned on to too much, just a little trinkle of water is allowed, but there's a lot of pressure building. So sometimes there's kind of an eruption in, well, it could be tremendous tears, It could be anger. And you guys don't worry about it. Like, 
please, can you please just learn to give yourself a little more slack, a little um, not having to be so perfect. Let yourself be human during these difficult times. I mean, the most important thing is that you free yourself, that you allow yourself to be free. And if it comes with a little bit of an eruption, a little bit of, you know, that you find yourself, I don't know, shouting at some telemarketer on the phone or something, it's like, it's not the best, but it's, it's okay. Guys, I know you really want this knowledge. All I want to do is transmit it to you. And I'll tell you, Prima Suda does not have too many rules on herself. That's it. If you're upset, let yourself be upset. Don't repress it. Please. You don't have to express it. I mean, if you can, I mean, if, you can, if you've got the control not to express it, great. Don't, don't put any lids, no more lids, please. No more unnecessary lids. You can always go back and apologize. This sounds kind of maybe like trivial, but actually it's a really important thing for the journey and bring, bringing it in. That helps you to be more open to yourselves. That's what I'm wanting. It's heartbreaking to me how tight some of you are with yourselves. We may have sleepless nights. We may be not getting on with our partner. But when we clear the block, then we just get this gentle flow of the creator's energy. And we, 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 we've earned the freedom to then express our true nature in our lives. This is what you guys really want. I can feel how much you want it. You can have it. I promise you. So paying attention to your bodies. I hope you're paying attention to any tension that's coming up. Any warmth. Any expansions. Just being in your body and feeling how it feels to be you today as we gather together to move into more truth. Because that's why we're here. That's why you're here. That's why we're here. Interesting. I'm feeling this higher awareness coming in. This is surprising me in a way. It's as if there's this higher level of understanding coming in. And it's, it's like this is the introductory session of a higher level of understanding. It's like, it's just knocking at the door. But it's higher level, you guys. This will be happening in all of you individually, right across the board. Even if you feel that it, it isn't you or you can't feel it, just be open to, to the words coming through. This one that it is coming. We don't have to be perfect. We just have to be open to grace and be deeply sincere and willing to change. There's a couple of you, one particularly, who really needs to be willing to change. And that person probably knows who they are. 
If we're too stubborn, we can set up catastrophic consequences. Okay? If you're in a situation where the movement is supported and you've asked for it and you refuse it, what happens is the energy builds like behind a dam. And then it blasts through finally. So I have done that twice in my life, been so stubborn that I set up catastrophic uh, consequences. And it was out of fear. I didn't have any teacher at this time. I had to learn the hard way. That's the whole reason why I make this available. So don't, you know, don't start worrying about what I'm saying, but take, take the the hint, give any stubbornness over to Ama, to the Creator. As part of this, see for yourself how much it doesn't work to be stubborn. When you experience the consequences of having been stubborn, refusing to change, when you feel the deep sorrow, pain you caused yourself, the fear dissolves. That's how you dissolve fear. You feel the pain of how much it's getting in the way, how much it distorts your experience. And you feel the sorrow of it, and your fear will dissolve. I promise, that's how you do it. That's one of the ways. You can also do something like climb Mount Everest, <laughs> do something physical, some kind of external challenge like that and experience incredible fear and get through fear that way too. Or you can really love somebody and move through fear to get closer to them. The universe always gives us so many different ways to solve things. I feel your heart's a little protected, but that's okay. Some of you have got some anger in your heart, some anger at yourself. Like an armor. Amma's grace. Let's say something um, I want to raise, and it's very human. And I'm, I'm actually going to ask for questions after this, but... It may be uncomfortable for you. Some of us are kind of celebrating feelings of being broken. Uh, Amma talks about how some of us love and we hold our pain to our hearts with great devotion, like a little baby of darkness, and we don't even realize we don't even see the darkness. We just feel broken. And we'll say, oh, my conditioning was so heavy. And we so know what it feels like to be alone and feel alone and separate. And I just want to put a flag there, okay? Flag, kind of warning, warning. You know, don't do that. Remember, Amma can heal anything. Our souls can heal anything. There is nothing stopping you from allowing this creator energy to flow in you. There's nothing stopping you. The only thing, if, if you're not fully realized, the only thing that's stopping you is just your your beliefs, your thoughts about yourself. We're gods, okay? We think we're just these flawed human beings. As long as we're focused on we're flawed human beings, it makes it hard to feel the creator within so we don't feel our infinite natures. It is a joke. But I know how real it is. Like, it's the game. It's the game. Go 
over the years, I've heard so many just the sad stories. I mean, holding on to the pain. Okay, so it's good to feel it deeply, to acknowledge it, to know it inside and out, and then to let yourself grow past it. This is really, really important. I want to say it's really important to the satsang and all of us in it. We're all broken. Like, our souls are never broken. Our egos are formed over our grief, our fear and our grief at having to turn away from our true nature to fit into our family. But we're, we're never really broken. We just think we are. We just feel we are. Think of Olympic athletes and how much they want that gold medal and what they put themselves through. That's what works, <laughs> you guys. On the spiritual journey, it's like being a secret Olympic spiritual athlete. And you're going for the gold. Roger Bannister broke the four-minute mile. And then after he broke the four-minute mile, a whole bunch of people suddenly could, ru could run a mile in four minutes, in under four minutes. This is how our conditioning can be broken, you see? If we, if we like, get, like, grow through our conditioning in one area, even, just one area, then you start seeing that you could get past it in all areas. It's like we get hypnotized, like the human race hypnotized that nobody could run a mile under four minutes. Then even women started running under four minutes. We just get hypnotized by our conditioning. You guys, we're God. We're God. You... We're the creator. <laughs> and you know what? You're doing the spiritual journey exactly right. Because you know how Amma says that our lives have already happened. So whatever we're doing is what was meant to be. So you see, the whole thing doesn't make sense to the head at all. So we can drop into our hearts. It's like when I had that body work from, in the, from the group with, who was studying with Abraham, and I had three people working on me. I could not keep track of whose hand was whose. And with that, I let go of my mind, do you see? My linear mind could not keep up with whose hand was where. So I got lost in all the hands on my body. And I just then surrendered into this incredible, it was grief at that point, because it was a grief of how far I was from my truth. And, you know, I had uh, 10 minutes of grief, and then I felt like a million dollars. I want you to get so that you feel like the million dollars. get through your conditioning and some of you do this with this one in in this one's company not so violently as the with me with those three people working on me but you it's the same thing in Amma's hug you can do it in Amma's hug So I'm uh, getting the feeling that you guys are feeling like, you know, members of the not terribly good club that somehow you're not quite getting it or anything. Don't worry. You're just beautiful the way you are. It's okay. It's okay. We all have very different ways of our journey. We cannot compare our journeys. What I'm, I'm really trying to do is kind of distill how the journey works so that you get the overview, an understanding, because most of us are walking around with just this symphony of 
sensations and thoughts and emotions, and nothing really makes sense. And we're just pretending to have it together. <laughs> that is the normal person. You guys, you uh, are you feeling like tired or something? You guys seem very like, oh, maybe it's a bit overwhelming. Beautiful the way you are. And I see the God in you. And I don't want you to hold on to your pain like that, like your brokenness and go, oh, I'm broken, I'm broken, you know? If you, this is the point of the mantra, you know, say your mantra. Amma said, like, if you say your mantra three years without stopping, you'll become enlightened. But she also says that she likes it better when people become enlightened in old age. Personally, I mean, I don't know why Amma says that, but I could imagine that it's kind of more organic if you just go through the seasons of your life. I'm feeling a cutoff. Okay, so if this is coming up in the satsang, it's coming up to be cleared in all of you, either consciously or unconsciously. It's a, it's a cutoff. It's, um, okay, so I'll tell you what the cutoff feels like to me. There's a very, I've had some very beautiful clients and I would, I would, over the years, I've said to them, you know, if you feel pressure outside your heart, it's just your soul wanting to come back in. Just focus for a few days on allowing the pressure to come back. These people were very, very focused on outwardly healing, like and often alternative healing, but they were very, very focused on, I do A and B and I'll get C and D. And I would be talking about, okay, embody love, you guys. Learn how to embody love. I'm, I, this is, I, I'm, I'm sort of like coming like, this is the way of the heart. You can learn to embody love. It's a very quick way, actually, once you get onto it. And... I wouldn't get through to them. And they'd come back the next year and we'd have the same conversation. Okay, I'm feeling a similar cutoff right now. But the good news is several are breaking through now. There's this cutoff and I don't know what it is. It's kind of... Um, um, it's like um, a box that the spiritual journeys in, I think. It's something like that. It's as if your spiritual journey is boxed. Boxed. Yeah, it's that, you guys. Okay, so this is the unboxing of the spiritual journey today. And yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I know, right? Hooray! Have the spiritual journey unboxed so you can get the heart of it, so you can get it, so you can heal the creator within you. This is really hitting home with a lot of you. Yeah. I'm feeling this big relief. And, you know, it's, it's all me too. There isn't any separation. It's funny, when I said that, kind of the box came back a bit. It's funny. The journey could not be boxed. God could not be put in a box. You get it? If you, whatever you're putting in a box, you're putting in a coffin. And it might feel safe, but it's not. Some of you are, are, might be feeling a bit of shock. Some of you look sort of stunned. This is very beautiful, you guys. This is a very beautiful thing to be doing with you. You can't be boxed because you're infinite. 
even the universe is infinite. And the universe is just created by your mind, actually, for you to play in. The thing that is going to help unbox you is for you to realize how beautiful you are. So I'm going to keep working along here. It's like there's a feeling of that you're not beautiful and that you and you're having trouble forgiving yourselves for things. I'm going to especially call on Ama right now. I mean, I always do before I start, but really calling on her for all her grace. Help her children see, see yourself. To see yourself. Be able to witness the God in you. For your heart to be strengthened. This is strengthening your heart. Good. We come out of the box and our hearts are strengthened. That's how it works, you guys. And then as your heart is strengthened, you walk forward. Just with more and more love. More and more trust. Bumbling away like any human being. We bumble. Some of you feel there's not enough love in the world for you almost. There's never enough love. Yep. I know the feeling so well. You are love. You are love. You are love. You, you actually, I mean, as a human, you need love, but really you are love. <laughs> and when you get that you are love, everybody will love you. <laughs> In the meantime, this one loves you, and I'm holding the space for all of you, each individual. I'm holding the space for you to just at, gradually at the pace that you can handle to just feel loved and secure and that you're entitled to be here. And you're precious. You're incomparable you you're irreplaceable without you the world would be poorer in so many ways because really you your essence pervades the whole world it's you actually the whole world is you but <laughs> but if you can just feel more love just hearing these words will be altering things. And we're not machines, but you really got that we can't box a spiritual journey. It's too wild. If if we're if if it's too boxed, the journey dies actually. The heart of the journey gets lost. We're all a bit nutty. You know, we're in a nutty world, and we're all a bit nutty. And so just, like, accept that. Like, give yourself permission, you know. Just give yourself permission to be more your true self. We're just a bit nutty because we've got, we've all got our conditioning, and we've all got our past lives that influence us in, in very idiosyncratic ways. And it's for us to sort of gradually decode it all and allow it to heal. And if we're trying to be normal too much, we never get down. We never sort of see the idiosyncrasies of ourselves. And so we don't, we don't pay attention to all the threads in our experience. 
I've lost you a little bit. You know, I'm, I may be talking too much. <laughs> so does anybody have a comment or question? Or just want to express some confusion at what this one said? Or, or any good news, any breakthroughs? Or difficult. Laura. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hello, um, sweet one. Hello. Just some gratitude because what you said in the beginning about attending satsangs, I used to not understand satsang at all. And every week I go through a war with my ego to go or not to go. And, but you said just by coming, it's like a drip, drip, drip IV. Right. And you're right. That's what's happening. Things just kind of open up. So thank you. Yeah, thanks, sweetie. Thank you for saying that. I know it's like I used to read the Gita and I wouldn't get it. And then I, but I just kept reading it and rereading it. And then I start to understand it. It's the same principle with satsangs. You just come, yeah, and the comprehension goes up. Thank you, Laura, sweet one. Yes, Michael. I wanted to say that for, um, you know, the last days, couple of weeks, whatever it is, um, I'm, I'm really feeling different. Uh, in relation to other people. And I used to be very, um, uh, in a way, confrontational, very defensive, um, you know, always looking, you know, for some, for the attack, all sub, well, subconscious, not obviously to be attacked physically or, or emotionally directly, but, but, um, um, and now I find um, uh, that, uh, and it's very difficult to explain. It's almost like um, something washed over me at night sometimes. It gets more powerful. Um, certainly this feeling of understanding um, that we're all in the same boat, that we're all together. Um, and it's it's really changed uh, my attitude, I think, and the, the way I interact with people. So that's been, um, I would say that's been the significant thing for me lately. Well, that's pretty huge. And it, it is what happens is we keep on and then our subconscious will start, if we're really sincerely wanting to bring God into our lives, our subconscious will gradually start to help us with this process, if we're consistent, if we're really consistent with wanting it, it will come in behind us as a big engine and our dreams will alter, right? And we'll get experiences at nighttime that really help us on our journey. It's like the elves and the, you know, in fairy tales where the elves do the, the work that the heroine needs while she sleeps. It's exactly that. Yeah, that's great, Michael. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. And is this is this like at work? Like, if, can you give an example of how it's different? Well, it, yeah. As a matter of fact, um, <clears throat> just just a couple of nights ago, I was at a, um, you know, at some dinner, uh, professional dinner. Um, and <clears throat> there were people there, um, certainly one person that I always felt very an antagonistic towards. Um, and, and it was from a position of, um, well, superior, you know, a sense of superiority, yeah. um, artificial, of course, but that's, you know, how it came across. And, right. um, and th that completely broke away. It was, wow. you know, this this guy's my buddy. 
Um, and wow. that's how I interacted with him. And that completely changed the, um, and I just found I was just, you know, more open and not so right. guarded as to what I was saying. So when it comes in, it's just seamless like that. Yeah. Exactly. Yay. Jay Ma. And, you know, it comes and goes. We'll, we'll be like that, and then we'll, we'll come to a new level of, you know, and stuff will come up, and we may have difficulty again. But it's like there's this new baseline, Michael, yeah. and then if there's any difficulty again, it will just get a higher baseline. It'll just take you to more and more love and compassion. Fantastic. Yeah, great feeling. Isn't it a great feeling? It's like me too. I can do it too. It's happening for me too. Yay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it's to really want it when we're sincere. And you guys, like Michael, you know I've poked you a few times, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. So I poke egos so that to help you become more sincere. There was a guy who spoke at the satsang and I could see his heart and I could see this big kind of phony balloon around his heart. And it was his habit of being phony, but he would think it was other people being phony and that he had to pretend too. But at any time, like, so what I did is I popped the balloon energetically. Um, so to help him then just become more real, because when we become more real, other people become real too. They feel the permission. But we have this tendency to point fingers and go, oh, they're <laughs> like that. Yeah, we should always be working with ourselves. Yeah. yeah. And Michael, my hat off for being so open to the journey. Yeah. Really, really worth it. <laughs> it. It is, isn't it? It yeah. is, I know. And it's what really helps and makes Amma happy and helps the world. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. See, we should be, if we're on the journey, we should be gradually becoming more, yeah, peaceful with others, loving with others, and more generous, less judgmental, um, believing in ourselves more, It just gradually happens. We start becoming like a well-loved child, you know, well-loved children. They, you know, school's more seamless for them often. And we start bringing in Amma's energy, the creator's energy, and we become, our vibration becomes then more like a loved child. Any of us can do it. it. It's terrifying. That's the joke. Terror comes up as we make the change. But that's the whole point for a teacher to kind of hold your hand a bit as you go through this. I'm wanting to pour love and gratitude and self-esteem into you, okay? Because you all look a little like you need it. Yeah. And I remember feeling like this. And I remember Abraham saying, as I walked by, you know, you guys heard like when he told me I was a terrible mother, but I walked by once and he said, you know, you are just this, he started praising me and I was a great student and I was a great mother and blah, blah, blah. And you know what? I could feel that he was doing it because I wasn't doing that. Do you see what I mean? He was trying to pour it into me. But actually, you know, at that moment, it didn't help. It didn't help. I didn't believe it. I really couldn't feel it. I couldn't believe it. It didn't help. And I, and I walked away thinking, what the hell am I going to do about myself? Like, when am I going to feel that I'm lovable and that I'm okay the way I am and all is well with me. And it was very sweet of him to 
pour all that into me, but he may have been doing it so that I'd realize that it couldn't come from someone outside me. By the way, I really recommend you guys picking up that book that Anna recommended about him because it will it will make your journey easier. Abraham's just living what Alma teaches, which is to embody, you know, know that you're uh, the creator and human and that you're responsible for your lives. But you're not on your own, you know. There's a lot of love coming to you. And if you keep focusing, really wanting to bring it in and live it, it will come in. I promise you. You have to want it. That's the thing. You have to really want it. You know, God doesn't come cheap. Some of you say, you know, your ego grabs it and you say, you, your ego will say, well, I don't want to do it because I might get scared and what would I lose? But egos are so stupid. <laughs> oh, it's sort of like the, the pauper, somebody who's really impoverished going, well, boy, if I were really myself, what would I do? who, you know, what would happen, and and they're a princess, right, in truth. Or it's, a, you know, the, the story of the ugly duckling and the swan that didn't fit in with the ducks. Because it was swan. You guys, you're swans. You're magic children. You were magic children. And you can become magic adults and you know, you've all got a magic quality to me, all of you. All of you. I see you all as magic. I do. Remember I was talking, somebody was telling me that they realized, they suddenly realized the importance of, actually it was someone who spoke in the last satsang about following the guidance. was given. Yeah, you guys. I mean, if you think that the creator comes through somebody, follow their guidance, and then you will make way more progress than if you let the guidance drop. Yeah, follow it. Has anybody got any other questions or comments? Oh, Susan, yes, please. Hi. hi can you hear me? Yeah, beautifully. Thank you. Oh, hi. Hi, Hi, Pema Shudra. I want to thank you for um, for holding these thought sayings and for all the work you do. Um, for me, I've noticed um, also like my goal relate outside relationships changing. I realized um, I like I really have struggled with my family, my like my immediate family, like my, my parents and brother, sister, whatever. And I realized that I had always been seeking like love from them, like a particular love, my idea of what it needed to be. And um, listening to you and joining the satsang, it's like I dropped it. Like my friends can't believe it. Like, I was, like, really pissed off at my mother for, like, being narcissistic and yada, yada, and not helping me enough, you know, because my husband died when my daughter was five. And I've been, she's 20 now. I've been angry for, like, 15 years, I swear to God. And it's just, like, it's just not even a thought. And I realized this is the work I've needed. This whole, I'm so in my head. I was a philosophy student. I'm an artist. Like, I'm all these things. And like, um, like really allowing love in is so hard and I'm terrified. And I, what I've been experiencing lately is sort of the ping pong effect. So like yesterday, my husband and I went down to the beach. It was a beautiful day. I love water. I felt like Amma was the water. 
I felt my whole heart open the entire day. Everything was great. Like watching the crabs on the beach, just like the whole thing, the people, like whatever. It was quiet. And then this morning, like I wake up, it's all good. And then like the fear, like, it's like, like, ah, you know, like, ah, I'm so tired. Like I'm tired of like the back and forth swing, but I'm trying to allow it. <clears throat> but, um, so what was the fear about? I don't know. I just think it's my ego. Like, Oh, I, it's like, I have a hard time, like trusting, <clears throat> like trusting my heart. Like what, what is my intuition and what is what I think is best? Something like that. I mean, it was like nothing. It was just like physical. It was just like my body I had to like, um, it's like, I, I have to, like what I did is I put, I listened to you before the satsang and it just helped me calm, calm me down to remind myself of my connection or being God or my connection to truth, right? It's like I have to constantly um, <clears throat> remind myself of, of that sometimes. I mean, sometimes it's not a struggle, but I feel like when I've had like a good day or a moment, sometimes I get like this weird, like egoist, egoist backlash. Sure. <laughs> that wants to yeah. wants to like argue against it. Yeah, that's it. it. It's it it it's a pendulum. It will do that. But yeah. it, sweetie, that's it's fantastic. If if you're reminding yourself about the creator often, that's it, you guys. Just do that. Do that. And the the fear when it's coming up, it's actually leaving your body, sweetie. It's leaving your cells. But when it comes up, you will like you're feeling it, but it's on its way out. And this, I feel like, is is a big thing for us to understand, these symptoms. It's uncomfortable. Fear is really uncomfortable. But it's really great that it's coming up. So it is leaving, sweetie. It is leaving. Just keep yeah, coming to the sad sex. Keep getting the IV, you know? I'm not, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> Good. This, I love this you. Was, I just, yeah. I love you. I love the work. It's the, it's just been really transformational and, um, <clears throat> and I appreciate it so much. And also I love the other thing I wanted to tell you. I love the affirmations around mothering and being a mother and the value of being a mother, because I chose that path with my daughter. Like she's amazing. Yeah. She's amazing. And she, oh my God. She's 20, so she's all in my grip now, right? Because um, she she's able to follow her truth because I raised her that way. But, like, I made sacrifice for that. And I felt I a lot of shame about that. Oh, uh, sweetie. Putting, you know, and, I and like, it's, like, wonderful to let it go and to um, oh. love myself for being the mother I have been to her. Oh, sweetie. Yeah. Because no one says it. I know. No one says it. And my I mom know. may like give me affirmation, but it's only if I do things in a way that she approves of. Like yeah. it's so like conditional. It doesn't matter. Like yeah. her opinion doesn't matter. Yeah. But it's like yeah. this other thing. This other this other thing. And like um anyhow, so I appreciate that so much because there's not enough people talking about no, it. No, they're not. <laughs> and, and I I'm so touched. I'm so moved because you know, this is part of the problem with um, where the generations coming up, they don't have much character development because there's been no loving mother and, and you know, dad to like really focused on them. But motherhood is like, you know, I, I, you probably heard me say this, but even the dog breeders, when they go to buy a dog, will look at the character of the mother. What was the mother like? Even in the dog kingdom. I mean, that's how important it is. Susan, I just think we just, it's revolutionary to like really love your children really fully. It is. So my hat off. <laughs> yeah. And yet doesn't get treated well. Mm -hmm. No. 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 May this change. <laughs> Yes, I think it will. Yes. 
I do. I I love um I love my daughter's generation. I guess they're considered Gen Z or whatever. I don't know. I get them all confused. But like they're amazing. They're Good. amazing. Good. Love anybody, love everybody. Like sexuality. Like it's just like all over the place. Um yeah, it's so I feel I feel really happy about that. But um anyhow, thank you, Permis Sudra. Oh, thank you, Susan. Yeah. Wow, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> this is good this helps you know like hearing these testimonials like this is good it's like it's it's reinforcing what we're doing you know because remember what i teach has come from 40 years sincere spiritual efforts and it's the feminine aspect and yeah i think we're we really need it and both males and females do well with um, the feminine face of God energy. Brings everybody into blossoming. You want us all to send you love, you know, or prayers. I mean, does anybody want to get a blast of love from us all? Maxie? Yes. Yes, I'm welcoming this is Scott. I'm welcoming God. Blast of love. Look, look I'm, at you well, need a blast of love and Maxi too. I'm welcome, okay. I'm welcoming that. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay. Big, huge blast of love for you guys. For, you, for Maxi and Scott particularly, but it's overflowing to all of you guys too. Yeah, here it comes. I can feel it coming so strongly. Wow. Wow. You know, I feel Amma, I feel angels. Wow. It's as if. It feels like they're so happy that we're asking for this, that you guys asked for this. Oh, blessings. Blessings. Love to all of you. <laughs>